Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. You know, I've been focusing a lot lately on MSAL authentication, both here on Blazor Train and with Maui apps on the .NET show. Well, now that .NET 7 has been released, along with the new version of Visual Studio, MSAL just got a lot easier. As I said at the end of last week's episode, I'm going to be going back through the archives and redoing some episodes. The YouTube URLs will change, so make sure you start on blazertrain.com when you're looking for the latest episodes. In this episode, I'll show you how easy it is to create a new hosted Blazor WebAssembly app that authenticates against an Azure AD B2C tenant, allowing users to sign up and sign in, and using their email addresses, and then being able to call API controllers securely. And that's coming up right now, right here on good old Blaze the Train. So everything I'm going to show you is in my repo at GitHub slash Carl Franklin slash MSAL auth in Blazor Wasm. First of all, you want to make sure you're running the latest version of Visual Studio, at least 17.4.0 because that includes .NET 7. Now I'm gonna do things a little bit differently now. As of today, November 11th, 2022, things are a little bit different. Fortunately, Microsoft has provided a template for creating a Blazor hosted WebAssembly app that already has configuration for MSAL and Azure AD B2C built into it. So if you've seen any of the other MSAL authentication videos that I've done, you'll notice that we don't have to really do anything once we create our resources in Azure and then create the application with those secrets. So we're going to start, as I always do, by creating an Azure AD B2C tenant. I'm going to create a new resource, and I'm going to search for Azure Active Directory B2C. There you go. Now I can create... And make sure you select Create a new Azure AD B2C tenant. So I'm going to use something different than I have in the repo, but it doesn't matter. Your organization name can be anything. Mine's going to be MSAL Auth in Blazor Wasm. Also, that's going to be my domain name. Next, you select your subscription and resource group and review and create. After a few minutes, you'll get this tenant creation was successful. Click here to navigate to your new tenant. All right, so we're going to go to App Registrations, and I'm going to select New Registration. Now, we're going to register two apps, one for the server side of the Blazor hosted WebAssembly application, and one for the client side. This one is for the server side. So it's going to be called Auth in Blazor Wasm. As for the platform, I'm going to select Web, but I am not going to select a redirect URI. Everything else is good. Click register. Now I've started a notepad file, a text file, with the information that's coming out of the portal. So I have my initial domain name here. I have my organization and tenant name. Now I need the tenant ID. Copy that right there. And we have a server app. The name is auth in Blazor Wasm, and the client ID for the API is right here. Copy that to the clipboard. Okay, next we're going to click Expose an API, and we're going to add a scope. First, we have to create the application ID URI, which is just known values here. This is the client ID. For the scope name, we're going to say API underscore access. For the admin consent display name, API space access. And for the admin consent description, allows the Blazor application to access the server API endpoints. This is right out of the repo, folks. Now we're going to add a registration for the client app. So go back to Azure AD B2C, App Registrations. Select New Registration, and this will be Auth in Blazor Wasm Client. 
Now this one is going to be single page web application and we are going to have a redirect URI and it is HTTPS localhost authentication slash login dash callback. Now we have to grant permissions, so we'll go to API permissions, add a permission, my APIs, select auth and blazor wasm, delegated permissions, and then API access. Now remember we have to do this, grant admin consent. Click that, say yes, and now we're all happy. Next we're going to create a user flow, so go back to Azure AD B2C. To user flows, select new user flow. This will be a sign up and sign in user flow. Create. The name is going to be SUSI, S-U-S-I, which stands for sign up, sign in. Now for identity providers, we're going to start with just email sign up. This is going to allow users to sign up if they don't have an account and then sign in with their email address and the password they pick. Now, before we say create, we want to scroll down to this show more for user attributes and token claims, and then select display name. Say OK, and now we can create. All right, one thing I forgot to do is go back to app registrations for the client and copy the client ID for that app. We have the tenant ID, we have the client ID for the server app, which is the API app, and we have the client ID for the client app. Now we can build the app in Visual Studio. I'm going to open a command prompt. We're going to execute this command right here. .NET new blazor wasm dash au for auth individual B2C. We need to fill in these things right here. First of all, our instance, which is the URL, and it's going to be https colon slash slash our domain name dot b to c login dot com. Very important that you put that trailing forward slash there. Ask me how I know. Okay, now we need the server apps client ID. There it is. We need that again right here where it says server API app ID URI. The rest of it is going to be inferred, but it does need that. The client app ID. Client app client ID. The default scope, which we added as API underscore access. The tenant domain, which is this. The app name, which is going to be auth in Blazor Wasm. And the sign up or sign in policy, which will be B to C underscore one underscore SUSI. Now, we're just going to execute this right here. And we're going to say cd off in blazor wasm. Here's my sln. I'll execute that. Now, as I said before, everything is all set up. There isn't anything we need to fix or add in order for this to work. So let's run it first, and then I'll go over how it works. So we have our hello world. We have our counter. Notice we have a login up here. But also, if you just go to fetch data, it's going to try to log us in. Now here's the cool thing. I don't yet have an email address and password. This is not a Microsoft account, okay? This is an account that's created in your Azure AD B2C directory. So currently nobody's in there. So I'm gonna sign up. Click sign up now. Now the first step is to enter an email address and then send a verification code. Now you don't need to set up any kind of email server or anything like that, it's all been done for you by Microsoft. All you have to do is go to your email and copy the verification code out of the email you just received. Paste it in here. And here's my code. Verify. Great. Now it's asking you to pick a password. And my display name. And then create. Now as soon as you've done this, 
boom, we get our weather forecast. If I log out, I'm logged out. If I go back to fetch data, it's going to ask me to log in again. Or if I go to log in, same thing. Now I can just enter that email address and password I just created. And now I'm logged in and I can fetch data. So let's go back to our ADB to C and go to the root and look at users. And there I am, carlappvnext.com. And so if I click in here, you can see my details. Pretty cool. So let's start with the server package. We've got Microsoft Identity Web. We also are using Microsoft Identity Web UI, but we're really not using it because this is the stuff that has the built-in UI in Razor that we are not using, but it's okay to keep it there. We have the authentication Jot Bearer and authentication OpenID Connect packages in there as well. Also notice it's all .NET 7. All right, let's check out app settings. So here you go. This is the stuff that we had to manually put in here before in previous applications. But for the API, we have the client ID, we have the domain instance, the domain. Notice there are no client secrets, right? We have our sign up, sign in policy ID, the scope, pretty cool. Let's go to program CS. So the add authentication method sets up authentication services with the app and configures the JotBearer handler as the default authentication method. The add Microsoft Identity Web API method configures services to protect the web API with the Microsoft Identity Platform 2.0. So this expects the Azure AD B2C section in the config file we just looked at. All right, let's go to the weather forecast controller for a second. And you can see I've got the authorize attribute right there. And I'm also requiring the scopes with that configuration key. Everything else is the same. All right, let's check out the client. Here we're using Microsoft Authentication WebAssembly MSAL. That's the magic there. Let's check out App Settings JSON, which is in my web root. And you can see I've got my authority, which is my tenant name b2clogin.com. If you don't put that forward slash in there, this is all going to run together and it won't work. Then I have my domain name, which is my tenant name dot on microsoft.com slash the user flow name b2c1susi. Then I have my client ID. Minimal secrets. You still have to be authenticated. This is not enough. You still have to have an account and be authenticated. All right, let's check out program. Okay, so we're creating an HTTP client with the base address, but we also are adding an HTTP message handler. Now we're adding that HTTP client as a scope service with the HTTP client factory. Support for authenticating users is registered in the service container with the add MSAL authentication extension method provided by the WebAssembly.MSAL package. And that sets up the services required for the app to interact with the identity provider. That's what we're doing right here. So and as you can see, we're using the options to provide the default access token scopes. And that's this URL right here, which includes API underscore access. All right, looking at the index HTML file, notice that we've got this MSAL authentication service JavaScript file in there. Looking at the app component, we've got a cascading authentication state around the router. And we also have a redirect to login component that navigates to the authentication page, which is also provided here. And then there's the parameter action. And that is passed to a remote authenticator view with the action specified. Now there's the login display component where we have the authorized view and we can log out by navigating to authentication slash logout. So if you look at fetch data, you can see we've got our authorized attribute here. Now that just means we won't be able to execute any of this code or see any of this content unless we're authorized. So. In this episode, we created an Azure AD B2C tenant 
and configured it for email authentication. We created a new Blazor WebAssembly hosted application with the .NET Core CLI, and that template provisions an app with everything you need to do authentication with MSAL. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. I love the smell of new Visual Studio templates in the morning, don't you? It sure beats the fried coffee they serve in the cafe car. <laughs> Last time I drank that stuff, I almost exploded. And that would have been bad. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train!